Thank you and uh, good morning all. It's my pleasure, honor. So many dignitaries, salwards are here and uh, it's always a pleasure. And this is going to be on Twin Cretans, which uh, in the oration, Siddhartha and Shah's oration by Dr. Makkar sir also touched upon the obesity and its seriousness. And I'm going to talk about this Twin Cretans, which is the new kid in the block and what can you expect from this. So these are my disclosures. I've been conducting the clinical trials also for the Lily. Can I make this a bigger screen here? Okay. So the obesity, you know, the rates worldwide are increasing and you can see clearly about in for last 40 years, we have seen a rapid increase in the global rates of obesity among adult men and women. And we also figure in that, for want of time, we will not get into that. It's a really a matter of concern even in our country. Obesity is associated with the multiple complications. It can be metabolic which are seen here very clearly, all of us are tackling every day, it can be mechanical, also it can be the depression and anxiety which can add on to your problem of treating your patients. So the life expectancy you can see definitely decreases as the BMI increases, you can read the right hand side, BMI of 35 to 40 is only about 60% chance that individual will reach age of 70. So very, very important that we need to look at this whenever we are treating the patients and we should be catching them as a holistic management. Now, this is an important slide which talks about the increased weight loss is associated with the improvement in various comorbidities related to obesity. That's what it is showing. You can see 5 to 10 percent, 10 to 15 percent and more than 15 percent. More than 15 percent, you can literally see the diabetes remission, TB mortality and the heart failures also. So, that is something which is important. And remember, as low as 5% weight loss is associated with the reduction in systolic and diastolic blood pressure and A1C. So this is what we all struggle, our bread and butter. Just 5% weight loss in your patient can bring down a lot of help to him. So please do you know, educate them, talk to them about the lifestyle modification, which most of us do not give enough time in our busy routine practice that the weight loss can induce or can be a helpful tool to bring down his A1C or his BP readings. Now this is what is the evolution in the management of diabetes which we have seen in last two, three decades. And the last segment you can see the GLP-1s, yes, GLT-2s. Now the dual GLP and GIP receptor agonists are in the block. Now just to start with, we have seen in these two trials, the award and sustain, dulaglutide and SEMA, that we had a enough weight loss and the advantages related to that. And this is what made news initially. I was part of Sustain 6, this is Sustain 4, it, it, about 10 years back. And this is just for your information, the list of GAP and GLP-1 receptor agonists which are going on in the development where the tirzapatide has completed phase 3 as well. And you can see water in the pipeline and two or three molecules are discontinued so far in the... So what's this tirzapatide? It's a... GAP and GLP receptor agonists, and it's a multifunctional peptide which is engineered from the native GAP peptide sequence modified to bind both GAP and GLP. The 39 amino acid linear peptide includes the fatty acid moiety at the sides and the PKPD properties you can see there. It is about 116 hours. So it's a weekly once and it's a single molecule which has got two pharmacological targets and this is the advantages you get by having the dual agonism. And that's the best part of it, where you have a enhanced hormonal activity, increased beta cell mass, improved glucose homeostasis, GLP-1 modulation, all these will give you additional benefits apart from your GLP ones, which we are already using. And tridopside has got a little more affinity for GAP than GLP. And this is all the CLAMP studies, which shows the improved insulin resistance and beta cell function with the GLP-1 and GAP organist. And this is where you get all the mechanism action and the various target organs you can see in the central nervous system mainly it causes reduced food intake, reduced nausea versus you can see on the other side it increases the nausea and the body weight reduction is profound. It's very very impressive. I'll just show you the data and this is the advantages you get. So let's look at the clinical trials and the proof for these statements. The 2B trial which is efficacy safety of this no, uh, novel dual uh, GAP and GLP in patients with diabetics, uh, placebo controlled active comparator phase two trials, initial ones, where the mean baseline was 8.1, the mean weight was 91.5, and this is the other trial to assess the different dose escalation regimens. This is how they usually develop in phase two trials, 
the dose escalation, they find out which is the best dose to be given and that's how they pushed into 2B and 3A, 3B studies later on they come. So the dose escalation strategy as informed by phase 2 is being there 2.5 mg increments every 4 weeks and that's what we do even in clinical trials as well. Now these programs involving trisoptid alcohol surpass and you can see literally all the permutations combinations of what we use in our routine clinical practice versus placebo versus SEMA versus Degludac versus Glargin and surpass 5 placebo both with Glargin with or without metformin. Surpass 6 is in the type 1 diabetics also the trials ongoing. Surpass CVOT versus Dulaglutide is still ongoing and next year it will be out. So surpass trials the general study design I am just showing 5 mg 10 mg 15 mg arms versus injectable placebo. The primary objective either to prove superiority or non-inferiority of tirzapatide 5 and 10 mg or 15 mg versus placebo or active comparator and of course the A1C uh, changes is the primary endpoint with uh, mostly 40 to 52 weeks about 9 months to 1 year trials. Now this is what is the change in A1C you can see the three different blue colors are related to uh, uh, the tirzapatide and the other one is a comparator molecule you can see versus metformin versus SGLT2 and of course with this you can see the reductions, the amount of reductions with the glargine, semaglutide, which is this one. You can see very impressive results with respect to the A1C. And proportion of patients achieving less than 7% in all these trials, you can see they are on par or better than in these degludac and glargine norms. You can very glaringly see those in those studies. And the most important, the proportion of patients achieving less than 5.7% which is a dream come true for most of us in our routine clinical practice to achieve less than 5.7 is a big deal and you can see the proportion of patients achieving with all the three strengths of tirzapatide. And this is the best part which we have seen personally in the clinical trials and the change in body weight is enormous and very impressive sustained and proportion of patients achieving body weight more than 5%. This is the first statement if you remember where diabetes and hypertension do get affected with just as little as 5% and you can see about 80% or say 70% on an average most of the patients will have at least 5% weight loss and that's the best part about that. So you do get what is the minimum guarantee what we call in our routine language the minimum guarantee is definitely there with these molecules for 5%. Look at the proportion of patients achieving more than 10% and this is the other worrying factor whenever a new molecule comes about the safety issues with respect to any injectable oral or injectable is hypoglycemia. So look at all the comparisons for want of time I will not get into the details. So I have just highlighted surpass uh, 4 and 5 where the hypoglycemia is with glargine and placebo. You can just see that. Now this is again about surpass 2 where we are talking about tirzapatide versus once weekly sema, semaglutide. Both are injectables type 2. We don't have in our country the injectable sema. But this is the study design, open label, active control, parallel group, multi-center, multinational. Diabetics, A1C 7 to 10.5 and BMI more than 25, randomized into four arms, including semaglutide. And this is what is the baseline demographics. You can see the duration of diabetes is about eight years on average and A1C of about eight plus. And that is what is the baseline demographics. And now you can see the change in A1C over time versus SEMA versus 5, 10, 15 mg of tirzapatide. And you can see there, the data is very clearly there. This is the proportion of patients achieving the A1C target at the end of the trial, that is 40 weeks. So 80% on an average reach the target in all the three groups. 7 point SMBG at baseline, and you can see at the end of 40 weeks, look at the improvement in the 7 point profile, which is part of the study. Change in the body weight over time. 93 was the baseline, and you can see an average reduction is about 10 to 12 kilos at the end of 40 weeks. Proportion of patients achieving weight loss targets at 40 weeks and improved lipid profile was also seen in the surpass too. For want of time, we will not get into that. And the composite endpoint of A1C less than 65, I mean 6.5, weight loss of more than 10% and no level 2 or level 3 hypoglycemia was seen. And of course, up to 60% of them achieved the composite endpoint compared to 22% on weekly 1 semaglutide. Now this is what the adverse events which are again comparable to SEMA because most of us get worried about the GI side effects of these uh, class of drugs but it is comparable. Surpass to the nausea over time and that's something which is observed in the trials where it comes down after about two to three months and the GI tolerability is again improved over time again showing this the red colored ones are the severe uh, 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 GI side effects which are seen 
and in all the three groups you can see over a period of time about 20 weeks it comes down gradually and hypoglycemia frequently through 40 weeks you can see there severe versus documented hypoglycemia that is less than 54 severe is those who require assistance for treatment of hypoglycemia and the pooled tirzapatide versus pooled comparator effect on time the time of first maze events which we usually ask for in most of the trials have shown positive values and CVOT surpass trial is estimated to be completed in 24 and this is the design of the CVOT study where the randomized double blind phase 3 versus dulaglutide in diabetic patients with confirmed ACVD for 12,500 patients are the target recruitment Tirzapatide at maximally tolerated dose up to 15 mg once weekly versus dulaglutide they have been studying this with a primary endpoint of non-inferiority of tirzapatide with dulaglutide in time of first occurrence of the composite endpoint that CV death MIR stroke. So this is another segment which they are studying which we are starting uh, uh, very soon in our center as well related to the weight loss and the NASH trials and this is where the surmount 2, 3, 4 are involved. Currently we just finished this month first week the surmount 2 study in our center and this is one of the results just to show you MRI sub study look at the 59 year old man who was on metformin SGLT2 randomized to tirzapatide 5 mg once weekly look at the Differences what you can see with the BMI 44 versus 36 and the body weight 134 to 108 and this is literally seen in the clinical trials. Two of my patients withdrew the study Sarmon 2 after 6 months which is 9 months duration, 6 months because they each of them lost 16 kilos. They said no more we want to continue this investigational product, we want to withdraw consent. So that is the power of this molecule, two patients out of 25 which I recruited in my center. Surpass 4 is versus glargine of course and this is what you see the reduction it will be very obviously seen that A1C reducing less than 7% at the end of one year. And look at the hypoglycemia incidences versus glargine. The compared to glargine it's obviously having the advantage and the meta-analysis of all phase 3 studies of tirzapatide versus comparator has got hazard ratio 0.81 which is of course not very significant. Tirzapatide for weight loss is something which is then in surmount 1 and 2. Persons with type 2 diabetes with obesity, BMI more than 27 plus comorbidities, 3 and 4 for persons with obesity and they are just completed as I said. Now, and this is what we were doing it, the surmount 2 study, it is up to 10 mg, 15 mg versus placebo and these are obese individuals, the entry level BMI is about 27. Surmount 1 is for the treatment of obesity and uh, overweight which is just approved in US recently and these were the baseline characteristic of US study participants, I am just showing you the age wise and look at the ethnicities differences including Asian people were included in that. Percentage change in weight loss you can see for want of time I will just rush through these slides. So what do we expect from this twin creatine's outcome? Obviously the weight reduction, sustainability after 72 weeks and the distribution of percentage of change of each participant you can see the bottom one 97.7 percent participants achieved the weight loss. That is the best part. Change in the fasting insulin levels, change in the lipids change in the blood pressure and this is one number which most of us don't change in our routine practice because bringing down 10 mm of systolic BP will give you more advantage benefits to your patients rather than bringing down your HbA1c from say 10 to 8. And the percent of pars participants reaching the weight reduction targets as we were talking about 90% of them reached more than 5% which is our basic re requirement in most of our patients more than half of them achieved 20% one third of them achieved more than 25% weight loss and that was the best part of it. Change in the body composition through the DEXA which are sub studies were done, total fat mass and the lean fat, fat mass you can see the advantages, GI side effects which we need not worry, the other adverse events, gallbladder disease, yeah I will just finish in a minute. And of course pancreatic enzymes, calcitonin, we had one patient where the calcitonin levels increased because these are contraindicated in patients with the history, family history of medullary carcinoma thyroid, that patient never had anything but the signals increased, we withdrew the drug then rechallenged it normalized. So this is one of the experiences in my center, heart rate about 5 uh, beats would increase in most of the patients but what we have seen and it does not increase the risk of major adverse cardiovascular uh, events uh, so far. So the key prescribing information, single dose pre-filled pens 2.557, 12.515 0.5 ml after 4 weeks you up titrate. In addition to glycemic control increase the dose 2.5 increments and the maximum dose is 15 mg once weekly at any time with or without meals unlike your other GLP ones, inject subcutaneous in, in routine way, contraindications, family history I just told you now, 
Serious hypersensitivity limitations has been not been studied in the history of pancreatitis and type 1 diabetes, which is the exclusion criteria. And of course, the precautions, warnings, you should know about this. The key takeaway, all trisoptate doses demonstrated superior, clinically meaningful and sustained body weight reduction versus placebo. Participants experienced average weight reduction of about 20%. Treatment with trisoptate at all doses translated to clinically meaningful improvements in the cardiometabolic risk factors. And the tolerability safety is consistent with the GLP-1s. So where does it fit in? Literally in our clinical practice, I think this slide will talk by itself. This is where when you want more than 20% weight loss, you can just fit in before probably pushing them to the bariatric surgeons. Thank you very much for patient hearing. Any questions, I'll be very happy to.